Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we are doing the Pearsonet Excel International A Level Chemistry Unit 2 for October 2019. This is the part one video. I'll put the link to the part two video below the description box. Let's begin with question one. Question one says lithium carbonate decomposes on heating. They've given us the equation for that reaction and they say what is the maximum volume in decimeters cubed measured at room temperature and pressure of a gas produced from 3.69 grams of lithium carbonate. Remember they've told us room temperature and pressure and they've told us that the mass is going to be this one here. That is the mass of lithium carbonate. So I need to find the number of moles of lithium carbonate which should be mass over molar mass and that is the mass. That is the molar mass giving us those moles for this one here. Using the mole ratio it's going to be 1 to 1. So the moles of carbon dioxide are going to be exactly that. And since they told us this was carried out at room temperature and pressure, we know volume of gas should be number of moles times molar volume. If we want the answer in decimeters cubed, so we can just multiply by 24. So 0 0.05 mole times 24 gives us 1.2 decimeters cubed. And the answer should be a C. Question 2 says a sample of 1,2 dichloroethane, which is that, contains only the isotopes that, 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 and that. How many molecular ion peaks are there in the mass spectrum? So I drew a sample, which could be like this. And we know we have two chlorine atoms. This chlorine can be 35, that 35, meaning one possibility. So we can have chlorine 35, 37, another possibility, and chlorine 37, 37, another possibility, as you can see here. So it means there is a possibility of having only three molecular ion peaks, and that is the answer I put here. So the answer should be a C. Oh, by the way, remember, if you're doing these papers, you have to put an X. Do not circle like I did. You have to put an X around there. So moving on. Question three says, under certain conditions, graphite burns to form carbon monoxide. We can see the equation for that. And the enthalpy change is negative 221 kilojoules per mole. So they said, which of these is correct? Okay, so the equation is like that. Okay, so they say that delta CH of carbon is negative 221 kilojoules per mole. That is enthalpy of combustion of carbon. This is not combustion of carbon because it should have been one mole of carbon being burned, so that is out. This is two moles of carbon, so that cannot be enthalpy of combustion of carbon. The next one, enthalpy of formation of carbon monoxide is that. No, this is wrong because it should be one mole. If it was one mole, but here we're forming two moles, so that cannot be the enthalpy of formation of carbon monoxide. Then here, the enthalpy of combustion of carbon is that. Enthalpy of combustion of carbon, when you burn carbon, it's not going to be that as well. So because the enthalpy of combustion of carbon is when one mole of carbon is burned completely to produce carbon dioxide. So this is not carbon dioxide. They produce carbon monoxide. I put the definition here. Formation of carbon monoxide here means the oxygen was not excess and therefore this was not the enthalpy of combustion. Enthalpy of formation of carbon monoxide, let's see, should be that. Yep. Here they formed two moles. Forming one mole should be half of that, which is negative 110.5. And that is correct. So the answer here should be a D as we can see there. So question four, they say, what are the strongest interactions between molecules in solid hydrogen iodide? Now, solid hydrogen iodide is going to have London forces, not covalent bonds between molecules and not ionic bonds. It's London forces among the ones given here. So the answer should be a D. So question five, they say, equations for four reactions of copper or its compounds are shown. We have these equations here, and they say, what is a disproportionation reaction? A disproportionation reaction is where one, one substance is oxidized as well as being reduced. So for a disproportionation reaction to be got, we need to have things that are in different, three different oxidation states. So when we see copper to copper, no, because there should be two, two oxidation states of copper on the product side, so that is out. Here we see iodide. Yes, we have iodide, but this is also iodide. So here we can see there is conversion from iodide to iodine, which is oxidation, but there is no reduction here. They see here copper, we have only one copper, so copper is out, and the others are also out because the hydrogens are the same, the nitrogens are the same, and so on. Ni I, I say nitrogen is the same because this is a nitrate, and that is a nitrate, so it's same oxidation state. 
So reaction three, we can see there is copper one being converted to copper and copper two. Actually, if you had memorized this from theory, you could already see reaction three is the disproportionation reaction. We can see copper one being converted to copper, that is reduction, and copper one being converted to copper two, that is oxidation. And then lastly, we see of copper oxide, copper two plus two plus, oxygen two minus, two minus. So this is not a redox reaction because we can see there is no oxidation as well as reduction. So the answer here should be reaction three. And then here they say, which is an acid-base reaction? Of course, this one here, this is a base that is an acid. So reaction four. Question six says, which statement is correct? A, barium carbonate is less stable to heat than magnesium carbonate. Barium carbonate is more stable. If you revise your topic A to see thermostability of group two carbonate increases as you go down. The reason for that is to do with polarization. Barium is a bigger cation. Uh, we see magnesium is a smaller cation. So magnesium polarizes more in comparison to the barium. Therefore, there is going to be a weakening of the bond between carbon and oxygen in magnesium carbonate. So that will cause less energy being required for the decomposition in comparison to what would occur in barium carbonate. So this is wrong. Barium hydroxide is less soluble in what? No, that's wrong. Magnesium hydroxide is less soluble. Barium hydroxide is actually soluble. Part C says barium sulfate is less soluble in water. Yep. Solubility of sulfates decreases as you go down the group, while solubility of hydroxides increases as you go down the group. So this is correct. D, barium metal is less reactive with water than magnesium metal. Reactivity increases as you go down the group. So this is also wrong. So our answer here should be a C. Moving on. Question seven says, which statement is not correct? Chlorine is more electronegative than bromine. That is correct. Electronegativity in group seven increases as you go above. Because chlorine is higher than bromine, chlorine is more electronegative. Then chlorine is more reactive than bromine. Yes, because for group seven, the smaller the size of the atom, the higher the reactivity because group seven elements react by receiving electrons. Then C, chloride ions are stronger are reducing agents than bromide ions. To be a strong reducing agent, it means you get easily oxidized and that oxidation means you easily lose electrons. That is wrong. Chloride does not easily lose electrons. D says chloride ions are stronger reducing agents than fluoride ions. Again, a reducing agent is one that gets easily oxidized. Chlorides are going to be, yep, they're going to be easily oxidized in comparison to fluoride because they are bigger in size than fluoride. So that's correct. Here, the answer should be a C because it's the only statement that is not correct. Question eight says, a white solid X produces a red color in a flame test. They say, when aqueous silver nitrate and nitric acid are added to the solution of X, a cream precipitate, is formed, which dissolves in concentrated ammonia. So I already know this is bromide, but this white that produces a red flame could be anything. It could be strontium, it could be lithium. We cannot tell yet. However, we know it's going to be a bromide. So here we see lithium chloride, wrong, because chloride does not produce a cream precipitate. This does not produce, so it's either that or that. But we know sodium in a flame produces a yellow flame, so the answer should be strontium bromide. Moving on, here they say exactly 50 centimeters cubed over two more per decimeter cubed nitric acid reacts with 50 centimeters cubed, one more per decimeter cubed barium hydroxide to form a neutral solution of barium nitrate. What is the concentration in more per decimeter cubed of barium nitrate in the solution? So I wrote the equation for that reaction. Remember, knowing the balanced equation is going to help you to be able to get a more ratio. So this information here is for nitric acid, which is that, and that information here is for barium hydroxide. So from here, number of moles is concentration times volume, which gives me that. And the number of moles here, concentration times volume gives me that. So we know for these to react, they should be two to one. And actually we can see 0 0.1 to 0 0.05 is two to one. So the question is asking us to find the concentration of barium nitrate in the solution. So it means we need to find the moles of barium nitrate and since the mole ratio of these to that is one to one, the moles of these are exactly that, which you see here. Now, concentration is going to be number of moles over volume. We know this volume is, uh, is going to be, of course, 100 centimeters cubed 
because they said 50 and 50 total volume is 100. So it should be number of moles, which is that, divided by the volume, which is 100. However, I converted that volume into a decimeter cube, so I divided by 1,000, leaving us with 0 0.1, leaving us with 0 0.1. So 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.1 gives us 0 0.5 mole per decimeter cubed, and the answer should be that. For part B, they say, the volume of nitric acid is measured using a burette. Each burette reading has an uncertainty of plus or minus 0 0.05 centimeters cubed. What is the percentage uncertainty in measuring 50 centimeters cubed of nitric acid? So we know that the burette is read twice. So the uncertainty should be 2 times plus or minus 0 0.05. However, the value rate is 50. So that divided by 50 times 100 gives us plus or minus 0.2%. Therefore, B is our answer here. Let's continue to question 10. Question 10. Which of these products are formed when chlorine is passed through cold, dilute aqueous sodium hydroxide? Again, this question is from topic 8, whereby halogens like chlorine react with sodium hydroxide. And again, this is a disproportionation reaction. From your textbook, look at disproportionation reactions among halogens. So for this case, if it's with cold, we are going to produce oxidation state one here. This is sodium chloride one, as well as C Cl minus, which is a minus one oxidation state in sodium chloride. So the answer should be A, sodium chloride and sodium chloride one. Question 11 says, potassium iodide reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid. Which of the following is not a product? Now you remember again from your textbook, when iodide, iodide ions, react with concentrated sulfuric acid, five products are going to be formed. One is going to be hydrogen iodide. Observation is misty fumes. Then the next one is iodine. You could say it's a gray solid or proper vapor. The next one is hydrogen sulfide, which has a rotten egg smell. It's a colorless gas with a rotten egg smell. Then we have sulfur dioxide, which is a colorless gas with a choking smell. And lastly, you have sulfur, which is a yellow solid. So here we can see that is produced, that is produced, that is produced, except this one. So the answer should be a D for question 11. Question 12. Sodium thiosulfate solution reacts with hydrochloric acid to produce solid sulfur. Which change would be expected to increase the time taken for sulfur to appear? So here we can see A. Increasing the concentration of hydrochloric acid? Not necessarily. Remember, we are talking about which change should be expected to increase the time taken for the sulfur to appear, meaning slowing down the reaction. So when you increase the concentration of hydrochloric acid, the reaction will increase because this is a reactant. Decreasing the concentration of sodium thiosulfate, that is possible. Then C, increasing the temperature. When you increase the temperature, the reaction rate always increases, so that is wrong. And adding a catalyst, when you add a catalyst, the reaction is going to increase or the speed is going to increase so that is also wrong so the only answer is a b because this is the only thing that slows down the rate of reaction let's continue question 13 the equation for a reversible reaction is shown so we have pcl3 plus cl2 giving us pcl5 and the delta h for that reaction is negative 88 kilojoules per mole they say what effect would each change have on the rate of reaction an equilibrium yield of phosphorus 5 chloride or phosphorus pentachloride assay is increasing temperature at constant pressure if we increase temperature because the forward reaction is exothermic our equilibrium is going to shift to the reactant side meaning we're going to produce less of this so the yield of this is going to decrease however the rate of reaction is going to increase no matter what you do, increasing temperature always increases the rate of reaction. So the answer here should be A. Increasing temperature, again, always increases the rate of reaction, no matter if it's reversible or non-reversible. So uh, the answer should be A. Then down here they say, increasing the pressure at constant temperature. When we increase the pressure, you have to consider the number of molecules on the product side and the reactant side. So here we have fewer molecules at the product side and two this is one and this is two in total. So we have fewer molecules at the product side. Therefore, we expect the yield of PCL5 to be increased because the equilibrium will shift to the right. However, the effect on the rate of reaction, the effect is going to 
increase. So the answer is going to be C as well. The rate of reaction for this is going to increase uh, because increasing pressure forces the reactant molecules to come closer to each other. So the rate is going to increase and here equilibrium will shift to the right. So question 14 says, a chloroalkane is heated with dilute aqueous sodium hydroxide and the pure organic product is formed. So chloroalkane, sodium hydroxide, that is, it means you're going to get uh, an alcohol. They say when an organic product is warmed with acidified potassium dichromate, there is no change. That means that alcohol formed is a tertiary alcohol. So they say that chloroalkane could be, this is wrong. That is wrong. So we are only going to choose which one is tertiary. And here we can see this one here, B, is the only tertiary halogen or alkane. So therefore, we will go with that as the answer. Let's continue to question 15. Question 15 says, this question is about two isomeric alcohols and two isomeric carbonyl compounds. So we have that is an isom of that and that an isom of that. We know this is an aldehyde that is an alcohol. This is a, yep, and that is a, this is a ketone. So the question says, which reaction is possible? Reducing propan 1 or to propan R. Now, this is wrong. It should be oxidation, so that is wrong. Oxidizing propan 1 or to propan R. Correct. Reducing propanol to propanone, no way. And oxidizing propan 1 or to propanone, it's wrong. The only correct answer is B. Part B says, which compound would be expected to give a significant peak at mass to charge 31? You gotta remember this really well. Every time you see a 31, think about CH2OH, because this is very common. I think they know students forget about this. CH2OH is always going to be 31, and they ask a lot of this, both in section A as well as section B of unit 2. So uh, here they say, which compound would be expected to give a significant peak at that? A compound that has this is going to give a significant peak, and this is going to be propan 1 O. That is why I chose it as the answer. So let's continue. Part C says the infrared spectrum of one of the four compounds is shown. So, yep, that's it. So they say identify the compound using the infrared absorption from the data booklet. So, the, for this one, you have to refer to the data booklet, look for that specific peak and that specific peak. When I did that, I found out that this is going to be proper now. It had, of course, a peak at that point closer to that, as well as closer to that. So the answer should be uh, a C, which is proper now. So this brings us to the end of question 15, as well as the end to this part of the video. Thank you for being with us. See you in the next video. Do not forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.